We visited the Flossenburg concentration camp on two separate occasions. Both times we were emotionally moved and impacted by our experience there. It was the main camp and headquarters to almost 80 subcamps. It was in operation from 1938 to 1945. It was strategically located near a granite quarry where the prisoners were forced to work to produce granite for the Nazi architecture. Today, it is a memorial open to visitors. The headquarter building is still standing and was where the day-to-day -day operations and torture of the prisoners was planned. Part of the detention building still stands and consisted of 40 individual cells that housed prominent inmates and served as the place for punishment and torture. Over a thousand prisoners were killed in the courtyard here, including Dietrich Bonhoeffer and Hans Oster. The concrete rows show the foundations of the prisoners' barracks. They were built to house 250 people, but often held up to 1,000 prisoners. Next to the guard tower is the ramp that leads to the crematorium. The ramp was placed in 1944, when the number of the deaths increased tremendously. The crematorium lies over the Valley of Death, where the SS carried out executions and ordered the burning of bodies. The ashes of nearly 15,000 people lie scattered or buried here. The Square of Nations memorializes the citizens from each country who perished here at Flossenburg. The Memorial Chapel was built two years after the liberation of the concentration camp. It is built from the stones of the deconstructed watchtowers. This cemetery is for the more than 5,500 victims who perished during the death marches. This museum building was once the camp laundry and camp showers. The exhibits in this museum show the survival, forced labor, torture, execution, and the death marches that the prisoners endured.
100,000 people from 47 countries were imprisoned at Flossenburg concentration camp. Many people were interned for their ancestry, political beliefs, religious beliefs, or for engaging in the resistance. These books contain the names of the prisoners who were imprisoned at Flossenburg and where they were from. This museum was once the camp kitchen. It focuses on the liberation of the concentration camp, the impact the experiences had on the prisoners, and the remembrance of the horrific events. This video is moving and may be uncomfortable to watch, but it is a part of history. We are glad we visited this memorial and it was very eye-opening. We honor their lives by not forgetting what happened here at this place.